hey, in this video, I'm going to show you the five most used things or areas in my studio. Brace yourself for some shaky camera work because I'm no good at B-roll or any sexy footage. This is going to be me walking around with the camera showing you what I use the most, why I use it and how I use it. Come with me, I'm going to show you the five most used bits of kit in my studio. So first up, heading over here to my salon stand. I keep getting asked questions about what this massive stand is in my studio. It's called a salon stand. This is a Manfrotto one. They are obscenely expensive. Brand new, they're between three and ten thousand pounds. I think that's like four and twelve and a half thousand dollars. That was a really bad conversion. Don't buy them brand new. They're so bomb proof, nothing will ever go wrong. Do what I do, get a used one. They are the best way to produce flat lays. Any anything if you need a tripod, you need this. If I walk into this with my expensive camera on it, I will come off worse than my camera. These things are built to last. So this is used on every shoot that I do. It's brilliant. It's a bit old and dilapidated, but it does a great job. And that leads me to the next item, which is often used for the same thing, but it's not the right tool for the job. It's a C-stand. There's 10 of these somewhere in here. I can never find them. I can see there's some over here behind my cheese plant holding for background. Yeah, there's some in the office. There's 10 here somewhere. But what's so special about these is that they're cheap. These are newer ones. These have been with me around Europe in my car, in my student, not my car, I've only just learned to drive. In my assistant's cars, in lorries, in vans, planes, and trains, and they do not break. They are absolutely brilliant. I couldn't do my job without them. I'm gonna buy a few more soon, but they're just great. I'll pop a link in the description because these C stands, for the price, it's like a stand for life. They're so well built for the price. They're not as good as the Matthews Avengers, but they're pretty darn good. So this next item is not specifically photo related, but you do need it for photography. It's my coffee setup. I've recently bought, 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 purchased a Mocha Master because it can make an entire jug of coffee very well. It is the best pour over coffee machine you can get and mine's yellow. I've then got a nice burr grinder over here, scales measuring jug and some Guatemalan, I'm gonna butcher this, Todo Santerita coffee beans. Anyway, they taste delicious of my mate's roastery in Leicester called The Coffee Counter. I think he does mail order. If not, come to Leicester, it's worth coming to. It's really not, it's quite depressing here. Anyway, enough said about that. That's my coffee machine. Coffee is the currency of the creative industry and being a cyclist as well, it's very important to have good coffee. Come with me, next spot, number four. It's like flying an airplane, there we go. Here we have my tool bench. My workbench, tool bench, don't know what you call it. I'm not very manly, but there we go. So I've got my camera rig up here, permanently set up with a monitoring screen. My tools all on pegboard, chargers taped to the wall. My bigger tools all down here, it's a bit of a mess I'm working at the moment. I've then got some spare tether cables for various cameras. A nice fisheye looking mirror, which is quite useful. It makes the space feel a bit bigger rather than so claustrophobic being sort of hidden in here. And then up here, my lovely girlfriend got me this really cool The Tin House logo. And it's called that because our youngest always says my studio is called The Tin House because he's only little and he doesn't really talk properly. It's very cute. Here we go. So in my cupboards, we've got our paints and paintbrushes. Should really check in here before I open them because I have no idea what's in them. A mess of Velcro, torque wrenches, paints. I won't go any further because I literally don't know what's in there and it could be horrendous. But there we go, so these are all the little bits that I need to get my shoots working. So you can see I've just finished filming a set here. If you've watched my block working video, you'll understand that this is a, a process that I do. I'm currently doing all my shaky cam now. But there we go, so from there, this is the main studio. Come in the door to the bomb site today, which is the office. I shouldn't really be filming in here, it's so bad. But this is where I spend most of my time. This is my chair, this is my setup and I live here. I spend more time here and use this equipment here more than anything else in my studio. Let me go and turn off my air purifying machine. There we go, I'll be better audio now. So I've got my YouTube set up permanently here, which is very useful. I've got a, a little flag up here to stop that bit of dappled light ruining everything. My lights hanging here, which is super clamped onto the end of a storage unit. Then I've got my monster charging board. 
hiding back here, which is very useful. And it all just works, apart from headbutting the lights. But this is literally what I spend most of my time doing. My computer is my most used tool. And for me, it's a MacBook that lives down here. I've got one of those Lassie drives, Lacy, Lassie. Anyway, they're really good, really fast. Thunderbolt drive, which I work from. That travels with me whilst it backs up. I've got a whole video on my backups. I'll pop that in the description as well. Now, th this mess over here is being moved since it looks horrendous, as is all of this. But I do have one bit of kit that I'm particularly fond of, and this is my shoe shiner. I bought this little bad boy on a whim on eBay for like 20 pounds and everyone loves it, it's great. And because it's so dusty in here, your shoes get wrecked on this floor. So I often have my shoes looking pretty bad. So having that in here is quite useful and it's just a little cool thing to have. It's not very much used, but I just thought I'd share it with you because I quite like it. I hope that was of some use to somebody. Apologies for the shaky footage. I am no videographer as I'm sure you're now fully aware. Studios are funny places. You always assume it's gonna be full of camera gear, but a lot of the stuff that we use is tools, coffee machines, and this area here, I live in this little spot here. This is me most days, all day. There's a common misconception amongst people that I'm shooting all the time or that photographers are shooting all the time. I spend more time planning, learning, prepping, communicating, I'm now filming YouTube videos once a week as well. So it's, it's, a, it's very different to what you expect when you get into a profession. You're suddenly like, well, why am I not shooting every day? And then you realize nobody's shooting every day. Although we do go through those horrendous periods where you get 14 days in a row, including weekends of 12 hour shoots and you feel absolutely wrecked and you sleep for a month afterwards. But that's kind of how this life works for a lot of us. If you're enjoying the content, do hit subscribe. I'm still going for daily videos throughout September. Thank you so much for everybody's support so far. It's a massive learning curve for me. I've never done presenting like this. I've never done video or video editing and audio is just an absolute disaster for me at the moment. So I'm getting there, I'm learning. I'll get it right eventually. But thank you for sticking around and I'll see you all next time.